Spencer's Brunt.
Good evening. This is Dead Air Live, and my name is Susan Allen. And this evening is a very special evening. We are going to talk about the expressive arts again. And one of the people I have with me expresses himself professionally as a juggler. And he's done it for many years, and his name is Peter Panic. And I'd like to introduce him to you right now. Peter? Peter Panic. Hi. How, how are you, Susan? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Um, we just saw a clip, and I wanted to ask you um, how you uh, how you perceive that clip. How does it fit into your life? That was Francis Broom. Was that that they aired that? Um, that's he's considered one of the great jugglers of the 20th century or of all time. Certainly, if you're going to talk about the 20th century, uh, Francis Broom. Here he is on a, the cover of a book. Um, he he was uh, a hero or an inspiration to. Uh, really to anyone that, that uh, is passionate about juggling. His sister Lottie uh, was also a great, great juggler, uh, and they, they both had fantastic careers. Uh, and Lottie's son, Mike Chirik, is still performing, still doing it. He's oh, really? Of, yeah, Mike Chirik, is, uh, he's, lives in Branson, Missouri, uh, and performs, and very much in the same style. Um, Sort of, they have a, like a dynasty. There are certain family. It's it, sometimes a family business, circus, and whatnot. You you get into it because your family, um, you're born into it. Well, which comes to a question that I have, and that question is, did you? Uh, when did you become smitten? I you know I learned how to juggle when I was 14. I was a freshman in high school. There was a book called Juggling for the Complete Klutz. Uh, and the, the Complete Klutz series now has been pretty successful. That was the first one, and that was an intro to a lot of kids like me just growing up in the suburbs without any kind of a show business background, but it sort of taught you how to juggle. And uh, before I was juggling, I had a younger brother who had learned from the same book, and he, I think he was juggling maybe for at least three or four years before I was, but I didn't really take it until I did it myself, I, I didn't have any real interest in it. Um, so yeah, I was 14 and something, it's just like a, a bell went off, like I, something clicked where I, I said there's something here, this is um, something I'm going to pursue. So there wasn't any real reason to do it, I just learned how to do it and I realized there's, um, I grew up, I, I joke about this sometimes, but when we were kids they used to tell us that we can do anything when we grow up. And then eventually they start saying, you can't really do anything, you, you know, <laughs> you can't. You have to do this, you have to do that, you can't do that. But I, I sort of decided to say, oh, no, you told me I could do anything, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a juggling career. <laughs> Which leads me to your name. Yep. <laughs> right. And uh, it, Peter Panic. Peter Panic. It's a play on Peter Pan. Um, basically an adult human male pretending to be, you know, a living incarnation of Peter Pan, but that's what it was, is my name is Peter, and I was told for quite some time before I adopted the name Peter Panic that you have to grow up and you have to give up on your silly, childish dreams of having a show business career because that's not going to happen. So I eventually just took on the, I needed a, a stage name or a show business name, and that was the one I ended up with. I tried calling myself Sisyphus for a while. Oh, you did. Sisyphus. You know the story oh, of Sisyphus? Oh, I do. The guy I do. I use it quite often. Well, he's always rolling the rock up a hill, and it always comes back down. And to me, that's a wonderful metaphor. I still love that metaphor, because that's what juggling is. You, you throw something up in the air, and it comes back down. And you do it again, and it comes back down. And what are you trying to accomplish? It's never going to stay up there. Um, but no one responded to the name Sisyphus. Whereas, for some reason, Peter Panic, people... Everyone knows the story of Peter Pan, and I just started wearing green, and I goof a little bit about if I'd stayed Sisyphus, I'd be wearing like a black beret and <laughs> smoking unfiltered cigarettes and be um, Sisyphus, <laughs> the existential clown. You know, like that could have, if I'd have really stayed with that, I don't know. It, but, but no one responded to it. It's, it's one of these things where if people... 
which 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 comes to a, a really wonderful question about when this started to um, become serious for you, and were there any blocks uh, in your way, and how how did you um, how did it start to become very serious for you? I mean, what happened? Was it a series, or was it? I just need. I think as a young person, I was thinking I have to do something with my life. You know, I, I felt like I have to work um, at something. Uh, my father, for whatever reason, he wanted me to learn the value of a dollar, so I, I ended up getting a paper route, and I ended up cutting people's yards, cut, cutting grass, and shoveling sidewalks, shoveling driveways, and getting you know different teenage jobs. So I, I understood that you have to work to make money, but I started thinking, what if I could figure out a way to work at something that I kind of enjoy or that's fun or that's, I mean, it's almost like a, if you can make money as an artist, it's, it's like a win-win. Um, you're getting paid to do something you kind of like doing. Um, so that was the dream. And, and uh, pretty much right away, by the time I was, say, 15, I was performing. I started trying to do little shows for people. Um, when I was 17, I made my first real money. I was asking you about, like, the, your first professional experience as an artist. Everyone sort of remembers their first, the, the first time that they turned it into money. They turned their art into money. Oh, yeah. Um, everybody has that story. Oh, yeah. And, uh... I remember, um, uh, when I, I came to Boston and I went to a friend in, uh, uh, at Christmas time, I went to Beacon Street to her room. She was uh, going to dental hygienist school, and I I went into her room, and there were it was very simple. And the guy from downstairs came, and uh, he came up and went to her party. And I remember he smoked Galois cigarettes, right. which are oh, they have a stink to them that's unreal. Right. French, right. Yeah, French yeah. cigarettes, <laughs> and uh, never forget it. And he, uh, I, it, we were just funning around, and I sang a jazz song, When Sunny Gets Blue, but I, I was studying classical music, but I love jazz. And he looked at me, and he said, do you, do you want a gig? Do you want a temple gig in a synagogue? And I went, well, yeah, and that helped pay for my school. Right. I mean, it helped pay, pay m my way through um, school by helping me with my, um, my rent. Right, and, and that's the thing is you, you wake up and say, huh, I can, it's different than singing in the shower. Um, it's a different kind of pressure. It's a lot more fun, though, uh, doing it uh, in front of a live audience than, than um, I have nothing against people that sing in the shower. That's about all I do. I can't sing. I can't carry a tune. I can't, I'm not a musician. Um, the first time, I mean, I, I guess I had made a little bit of money, but as a high school senior, I had already done some performing, and my high school was having a talent show as I'm a graduating senior, and they, they asked me, do you want to get up on stage and do your act? They just needed to fill stage time in this variety show. And I said, sure. And uh, we had a tech rehearsal the day before, but I didn't have my props. And, and they said, what, get up and do your act. And I said, well, I don't have my gear. I don't have my stuff. And they'd already seen me perform. And they said, so you're going to do something kind of like what you did in the past? I said, yeah. They said, do you have a, a microphone? No, I don't need a microphone. Do you have music? No, no tech at all. They're just going to put me on stage. So for whatever reason, that I blame John Belushi. This is 1984. And I got out on stage and sort of did some jokes at the expense of my high school principal and my vice principal, Gene Masters and Harry Powers, that, that were sort of, I didn't curse or anything, but they were maybe inappropriate for, for that venue. And they suspended me for a week, and they punished me in any way they could. And they were, you know, I was in a lot of trouble. But someone called me up, some random person called me up <laughs> and said, uh, my son goes to school with you. You don't know him. He's in a different class. He says, he, he says you're really funny. I manage a mall, and uh, I, I, we're having a grand reopening, and I need to hire some entertainment. He said, what do you charge? Oh, my. And I had no idea, because this was my first time. I'd never done this dance before. So I started to stutter. It turns out you 
ask a series of leading questions ending up with, what's your budget? My fee is approximately a little bit less than what your budget is, but I didn't know how to do that dance. So I, he realized he's just talking to a high school kid, and he said, uh, I'll give you 250 bucks for two hours, noon to, noon to two. He said, do you want it? I said, yes. I said, yes. You bet. Yes, you can, you can, I will do that. So it was a really interesting experience because certain people wanted to really punish me, but obviously the, my classmates and even the faculty of the school, this was a deeply unpopular principal of the school. So a lot of people were trying to reward me. Other people were trying to punish me. And that's, to me, sort of what the arts are. You know, you hold something up, it's like an ink blot. You show it to someone and say, someone might say, I hate it. Someone else might say, I love it. That's right. But it's only one thing. That's it's right. A, it's a poem or a joke. Jokes will do that. Some people will love it, and other people will be deeply offended. But it's only one, it's, it's really just... In, one opinion. Yeah, in the eye of the beholder, like... That's exactly right. So, uh, to I me... I hated all the pottery I ever made. Right. I hated it. And other it, people might love it. And they, I sold every single piece of right. it. Right, right. So Why did you hate your pottery? <laughs> well, that's another story. You hated your own pottery? Right now, I think we're, uh, we're heading towards a clip. Okay. Are we heading towards a clip of, of you, maybe? Did you give them anything? I, I would have said, find what you can find on YouTube. I mean, I'm, okay. on, I'm on YouTube. So I think we're heading towards a clip, and we'll be back. Okay.
We're back again. Um, that was a wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 juggler that we had on. Can you speak uh, to that a little bit, Peter? Sure. That was the great Chris Cremo. Um, and he's the epitome of the gentleman style, gentleman juggler, which was, was a style going back to, I think the first great gentleman juggler was a guy named Michael Cara. Um, but it used to be they'd go out on stage wearing like a tuxedo and a top hat and smoking a cigar and, and you'd have a pair of gloves that you could roll into a ball and, and you have a cane so you can juggle your hat, a cane and, and a ball, which was your rolled up gloves. And, and you're using just doing tricks with, for instance, your cigar and, and those cigar boxes. Those were, uh, originally they were just cigar boxes. And I tried to pursue a gentleman style of juggler wearing a That's tuxedo. what you call what he did? That's, you would call that a gentleman juggler. And uh, it's just a style. Whereas the earlier clip, Francis Brune was much more athletic and acrobatic and he wasn't, you know, he wasn't wearing a tuxedo. But uh, I joke about it that I tried to be a gentleman juggler, but I'm not a proper gentleman. Like Peter Pan really doesn't wear a tuxedo and doesn't have a monocle and, and dress up you know, with a bow tie. So I, you really seriously, um, your persona became Peter Pan. Yes, yes. I took that on as, as like a, as a way to dress. When you put on clothes, you put on a costume and go out on stage. I, it's like wearing green. I put on the green. It's like suiting up to go to war or something, the wearing of the green. Um, so yeah, I took on more of a, of a Peter Pan persona. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm fascinated by the story. It's, I mean, a lot of what we do, everything is about telling stories. A poem or a song or a, a juggling routine or a, a video that's going to be on television. It's, hopefully it'll tell a story. Um, you and I talked a little bit about um, the professionalism. We talked about um, getting up and, and doing the work. Um, uh, uh, of a of a juggler, uh, you recently went down to Mexico, and people thought that that was just a wonderful vacation place for you. Well, it's it's a gig, and sometimes people forget that that it's freezing cold here in in Somerville, and and they think you're down in Mexico. Um, you live in Somerville, is that correct? I do. I live in Somerville. I've lived in different uh, locations in Somerville for now for on and off for 25 years. So yeah, I'm a Somerville. I didn't grow up here, so I don't have the, the Boston accent. But I've lived here f since uh, the fall of 1990. I moved onto 273 Summer Street, um, <laughs> right up the hill there. Oh yeah. So back to the um, back to the uh, getting up and 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 doing the work and the difference between the amateurs and the professionals. Uh, we I know I remember we talked about that. Um, that no matter what, you get up and you do the show. There's no... Yeah, you're not doing it. I mean, you're doing it because you love doing it, hopefully, but you're doing it because you have to. It's you, you, When you go to to work, whether you want to go to work or not, you have to do it. And and the majority of people juggling out there are, are people that do it as a hobby or they're, they're amateurs that are doing it for the fun of doing it. They do it when, where, and how they want to. I feel more a motivation of um, I'm doing it for someone else. I'm not really doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing it because someone is paying me to do it, hopefully. Or you try to hold on to, like for instance, no one's paying me to do this. I'm doing this because I, someone asked me to and I like doing it and I like talking about it. But um, there is a different mindset that when you're a professional. It's sort of like being a professional writer, I think. You know, you can scribble in a journal and and never show it to someone, or you can show it to someone if you want. But if, if you have a deadline and you have to publish a book and people are waiting, your editor is waiting to get, it's a different kind of a pressure. You don't just write just because you're inspired to write. You're writing because <laughs> the deadline is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but live performance is different because it's happening in real time. I can't write it down and then give it to someone and have them read it. You have to show it to them in real time. What, uh, are we going to another clip? Great. So we're going to go to another clip, and I can't, I can't tell you what that is, but... I think uh, it's, it's a clip of me on stage. 
Um, just goofing with my friends at a conference called Motion Fest, and I think a lot of the jokes they won't get because they don't know these people. Um, this is me not performing as a professional. This is just more performing for other artists at a, at a conference called Motion Fest where okay. we're talking about performing, but you get a chance to get up on stage and, and show some things, and they give you feedback. They critique you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't take... I, I sort of ignore the criticism. And it's funny, this clip, I'm asking for criticism, but I don't really want it, <laughs> I think, if I remember this clip. So you kind of tuned it out? No, I just, I'm just as, as a goof. I'm a self-taught, so I don't really want to change what I'm doing. I like doing what I'm doing, but I don't mind showing it to people. And if they want to critique me, they can. I do a lot of things wrong. When I see footage of myself on stage, I keep note. I'm like looking you, uh, at you know afterwards. Let's talk uh, when the clip is ready to come on. Let's talk about that that uniqueness, right? It, 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 because uh, a lot of a lot of things today are drummed out of people, so that they're like drones, so that they sing the same, so that they, but right. Um, and there are schools that they'll teach you how to do it. Like Chris Cremo, his father taught him. He he's doing very much the act that his father taught him. And Chris Cremo is the the, the, the gentleman juggler that we just watched. Okay. Now he created his own style, but he came up through his father. His father taught him to do his act, whereas I'm more of a person no one taught me. So Oh, you were, you were talking about that, about the European style. There's there were all kinds of different proving grounds in, in European circus families, the Moscow Circus, for instance. Um, there's, there were wonderful teachers um, that would teach you a style it's very different than the American style. We sort of were all self-taught. The problem with being a self-taught is looking back, my teacher was an idiot. I taught myself and I didn't know what I was doing. So I had to learn as I go along and I did an okay job. Um, people give me... So in a sense, can I, uh, yeah, I want to turn that into something positive. In a sense, that actually um, was a blessing in disguise. It, you, because, you turn you know, it into that. Because you could yeah. have been discouraged or you could have... Right. Yeah, and what you did was you moved past that. Right, you pushed through it, and you don't have a choice. I, I can't say I wish I was born into a circus family. I wish my father really pushed me to be, be a great juggler. You, you don't get to decide that after the fact. You, d you take whatever you're, the cards that you're dealt and you, you deal with it. So I did turn it into a positive. Any, any discouragement or negativity that I got, there's something very satisfying about proving someone wrong. When someone says you won't be able to do it, yeah, I'll it's, show you. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's, it's a dangerous energy, though, because oh. you can use it as fuel, but it's sort of a toxic fuel because it, it does lead to sometimes bitterness or resentment, especially if the person that didn't believe in you doesn't ever get around to acknowledge Reconciling Yeah, right. That, yeah. So that sometimes yeah. doesn't come around. Yeah. Sometimes that's it does. You know. that's, a, that's a great... Um, we're going we're gonna to hold that thought and we're going to go over to a clip of you now. Okay, thank you. Let's show that clip. Hello. Hello. It's great to be back here at Motion Fest. This may come as a shock and surprise, but I don't really have a new or polished routine for you. Um, but I'm going to do some juggling, have a bit of fun. I've got a couple new ideas I want to show you and get some feedback on. Get this last bowl out of here. To make this more dangerous up here today, I'll be doing this without a net. <laughs> got a better laugh than I expected. <laughs> out on the lights here. Yeah. And I can see it all. I'll start with there. I don't know if you can see very well. Can you see very well? Oh, we can see it all. This should look kind of like the smallest man in the world juggling tennis balls. <laughs> <laughs> like that? Yes. Yeah. Smallest man in the world, yeah. Keep it. Smallest man in the world. That's what my ex-wife used to call me. Oh. oh, come on. It's just a joke. It's not even my joke. I stole it from Scotty Meltzer. What's <laughs> <laughs> your name? I think Scotty got it from Robert Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I could go around the room with that, but it would get redundant, so let's just let it rest right there where it belongs with Robert Nelson. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Robert, you got a problem with that? You can kiss my filthy green ass. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I think girls should do more roles in contact juggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. I'm starting to name these tricks. I call this the albatross. The albatross, do you get it? It kind of goes around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> people, the test is right after the show. <laughs> Some people aren't taking notes. I'm starting to come up with different <laughs> positions and whatnot. It's kind of, kind of like yoga. I call it Yoditsu. <laughs> I that myself. <laughs> Pretty much ran out of material there, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, got, I got another one. I got five minutes. It goes by pretty fast. Look, it's the juggler of Notre Dame. <laughs> Stole that one from Disney. I thought you'd like it. Oh, uh, off there. Uh, but, that's the thing. Here's the deal. Here's kind of the question I wanted to present. I wanted to be a little bit serious. Oh yeah, one other thing. Actually, this is kind of a serious note. I don't want to bring it down, but Cindy Marvel just pointed something out to me. Uh, mentioned something to me. Trixie Larue has passed away. Trixie was. <laughs> Cindy's sad. Trixie was one of the greatest jugglers of all time. You know, and I, I'm always tempted to go for sort of, you know, dumb jokes and stuff. I used to always tell Cindy that she was a pretty good juggler for a girl. <laughs> but, uh... Did you ever fire that guy who was throwing you the props in Baltimore? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't, look, I hate, this is why I hate going to juggling conventions. People are like, you remember in 89? <laughs> <laughs> remember that time you dropped the ball? <laughs> you were doing great until then. People watch too many videos, I think. But, um... Because <laughs> yeah. this is the stuff, kind of the newer stuff that I'm working on. You know, this yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> the problem is, a lot of it's kind of small, you know, and quiet. Uh, and also, it repeats, you know. It's a move. I just did that with the ball on my no. foot. Or, this kind of with the ball. 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds already? Throw it up before they notice. Take Now, I did that earlier, but I do a lot of sort of high tech juggling, and a lot of this stuff is kind of small and quiet. Smaller and quiet, you know, it's kind of, you know, it, and, and I get to the end of my act and I have a lot of momentum and I'm trying to keep it going and I don't want to kind of bring it down, you know, and lose the energy, lose the momentum. But I, I like this stuff and it's kind of my new stuff, the original stuff that uh, I'm working on. Anyway, that's, that's my act. Thank you very much.
I really, I really saw a difference between your gift and the other's gifts. And I got to tell you, you're really, really talented. Well, really. thank you very much. And, and it it's, was fun to see the, the footage of Chris Cremo, and I think they showed Francis Bruin. And, and you are different. We're all doing the same thing. Juggling is, but it, yeah, you can, each person gets to have their signature or their own style. And you contribute, y y you can be influenced by other people, but hopefully eventually you, you develop your own. Your and, own. and we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but I'd like you to, I'd like to ask you to show us something. Oh, you want to say, I can, I can do some, I can do a little bit. I have, I brought a few different props. Just a few. Um, right. So, um, what would you want to see? Uh, well, here in the studio, um, we can't, we've already seen you juggle the uh, soccer balls. Right. So, how about um, either the tennis or the, uh, the unicycle and the, uh, do you do, do you, what do you juggle with the unicycle? I can uh, juggle and ride a unicycle at the same time. It's incredible. Sometimes people say, is juggling, is that all you do? I say, no, no, of course not. You can never make it just <laughs> with juggling. They say, well, okay, what else do you do? I say, well, I also ride a unicycle. Oh. Right, so they're, they're like, it's, it's really just, <laughs> but anyway, this is a unicycle. There's, yeah. there's only about, there's about six people in the world that can ride one of these things. Someday I hope to be one of them. Huh. And uh, so, but basically it's just a one-wheeled vehicle. You just kind of jump on, and now I'm riding. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> and I've been riding these things now for, I don't know, maybe <laughs> 33 years or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there it is. It's not rocket science. I got a chance to work Are at... Are you uh, swiveling your hips? Is kind of, yeah. Doing? No, you use your whole body. You use your core. One time someone was like, what is that? does that exercise your core? I'm like, I don't know, probably. <laughs> but it's, it's really just, you're, it's like a toddler learning to walk. It's only got one point of contact with the earth. So I'm really always falling. Even when ah. I switch directions, I'm always falling. Yeah. So, but you're always moving. It's now, like a shark. I, uh, how only, does that feel? It's fun, isn't it? It's just like walking. It's exactly like walking. Um, once you can do it. It's like, once you can ride a bike, you don't think too much about it. You just do it. Or okay. it's like swimming. Okay, so... So I'll juggle at the same time. Okay. How about that? Wow. It's incredible. We're, we're blessed. Right. We're, we're so, uh, these things, you know, you can light them on fire. You can use knives. You know, there's all kinds of different things you can do with these things. Um, I'll try to do both. The thing okay. about a unicycle is you got your hands free, right? You don't really... Uh, really? You're not using your hands too much to ride it. So there I'm juggling on a unicycle. How about that? How about that? Wow, I'm thrilled to be in the same room as that. Or wow. watch. I will do the same thing upside down and backwards. Get out of here. The only thing I don't like about that one is it smells terrible. <laughs> Am I doing jokes here now? <laughs> yeah, you doing are. My act. I you said are. I can't really do my act. <laughs> you got me laughing. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, sure. Much. I mean, I'll keep going. Yeah, keep going. We've got, oh, yeah. we got some time. I got to give a shout out okay. to John Higby. Made me this jacket. Oh, my gosh. Let's is it going to show up? Yeah. Show that off while I get some more. Props. Okay. My good Here friend John is Higby. This wonderful John Higby. That's my jacket. like my my logo. Yeah, get a close up on that. Get a close up. Who's got the close up? There's it's just a cute uh There I am. There he is. <laughs> and when did you get this? Uh, this last summer, a friend oh, of mine fabulous. gave it to me. That yeah. kind of ties you in, doesn't it? My, my good friend John Higby. Yeah, we talked about retirement in this, and we're going to do that. Retirement. When you come back. <laughs> retirement. Artists don't retire. They, you don't have to retire. You just. Are you getting it? They I will sure attempt. Are. Yeah, they're doing it. 
to look up. I will attempt to look up at the camera. <laughs> so it's a lot harder to juggle up in the air because when I'm doing this, I have to worry about dropping one. Somehow, that never really comes up when you're doing this. Really? Well, you don't worry about dropping one. <laughs> Do I have to explain the jokes? <laughs> hey, imagine how it looks to a dog. Right? This drives the dog nuts because this is 35 in dog balls. <laughs> Am I making you laugh? <laughs> All right, watch this. I'm going to catch one on the back of my neck. Oh, wow. That's tough for me because I have no shoulders to work with. I have the shoulders that was fab. of a nine-year-old girl. Look at that. That was fab. Oh, my god. And, oh. and they were showing Francis Brune earlier. People think of juggling as being like, you know, three or four or however many, but Francis was really great at doing a lot of stuff with just one ball. Oh my God. You know, this stuff is very much inspired by Francis. I am so speechless. And his style. You're speechless? Yes, I just talked. Do you want to learn to do it? Oh, no. I'll teach it to you. Anyone <laughs> can do this. Everyone has a spot. If you find a spot, you just sort of lift your shoulders, and you got a ball there. Now, do you give lessons? There's, it's no secret. It's all on YouTube. It's a we, YouTube. we talked about MIT, well, too. Yeah, it's a YouTube world. Now, magicians want to charge you money for the secrets. There's no secret to this. It's just a ball. You can put it on your head, throw it up, and catch it again. And uh, there's no real, there's no, it's not like there's a secret to how to kick a ball. It's just practice. It's just and practice balance. and repetition and muscle memory. And uh, so, I mean, you can, I don't really see any point in charging money to teach someone to do it. I'm happy to teach someone. I, I, I'm more into charging money to, I'll perform it for you. Um, but. And I, I, I would say yes, but there's so much to fit in. Right. Um, uh, that I, 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 I want it. I, apparently, we have like five minutes or less. Right. And um, I, I wanted to get in um, something. W where are you performing next, for instance? I'm going back to Mexico for the month of February. Um, is, is uh, you know, so that's a couple of weeks away. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I go back and forth. Um, this is a good time of year to be there. It's terribly cold here now, and uh, it's it's the height of the tourist season down there. So, um, it's so, so you're not hired by anybody. You just go down there. Oh no, I'm hired. I'm through. It's through uh, an agency. Bias Artes or something. It's A uh, and M Resorts, uh, a series of resorts. So yes, they. Okay. I don't just go down there. That's it's a gig. Oh. Um, okay. Right. Like um, a like a steamship or whatever they call it's it. It's it's, it's a like lot like working on a cruise ship. Only <laughs> only you, you're not you're not on the ship, right? Um, the problem with being on a cruise ship is you're stuck on the ship. This is a, a gig where I go to the resort, I do the show, I go back. Uh, we to live the beach. In, in Playa del Carmen, <laughs> right? The beach, Playa del Carmen. It's just a beautiful, beautiful yeah. beach town. It's a fun town. Yeah, we can see that yeah. in your face. Well, no, I, I just I try to get a suntan. I love making my friends jealous when I come back to town, and they're like, <laughs> "Grr," because they're you know it's bitter cold out here. Because they're burr. Right. And, <laughs> and they're like, "Where have you been?" <laughs> oh, I, was, I was in Mexico. Yeah. Do I have the thing is. I got to show it off while I can because it only lasts about a week. It oh goes my away because you don't see the sun. I don't see the sun. There's no vitamin D. Yeah, to to make it. Yeah, right. It's crazy. Right. Oh, there's so much. I forgot to wear my helmet. Okay. Did you let me ride a unicycle without a? Because <laughs> I, I, I want to. <laughs> All right. Get I want to back up. Get up back up there. We can no, I want to be a good role model for kids. <laughs> and and the thing is, helmets. You should try to be safe. No, they're really not dangerous. Oh, let's talk before you leave. We need to mention the MIT thing. There's an MIT juggling club that meets every Sunday. And uh, every Sunday, just uh, the Infinite Corridor, Building 13. And it's just a local club that, that anyone can get together and juggle. We're very friendly. It's a social group. 
There's also a juggling club at Tufts. There's one at Harvard. Typically, you have to be a student, or, or I think Tufts, they don't really care. Um, but the MIT club is one of the longest running juggling clubs. See, that's so important. Right. Yeah. Well, and there's juggling clubs all around the world. Every major city, every, every school is going to have a, a group that people get together and juggle, mostly just for fun. But that's also, it's fun to hang out as a professional because, uh, because people think I'm somebody. What? <laughs> Okay, so somebody's trying to tell me something, and I have to tell I have to tell you, Miguel, um, I, you're trying to show me something <laughs> that's really beautiful. But I, unless I have my glasses, I can't see a darn thing. Oh, a video. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna go to another clip, and Peter will be back. Okay. Okay. On to the clip. Okay, so we're Just gorgeous. People loved it. And watch, she's going to juggle. Right. It's, it's just, it's so cute. That's exactly what I was doing. That's the thing is, and I was like, are you making fun of me? Look at you. You're <laughs> making fun of me, aren't you? But it's so beautiful. And he had come from Russia. There was a tremendous tradition in Russia. But when he came to Harvard Square, Cambridge, people just loved him. The and uh, kids, yeah. The kids loved him. Adults loved him. It was just beautiful. And uh, He could get right up in their face. Yeah, huh? he would. He would get right up in there. And uh, unfortunately, he died. Too early. Huh? Tragically, right. And there's a memorial to him in Harvard Square right where he worked, right in that space. Oh. And it's funny because this footage is now 20 years old, and he's gone. Well, it still as relevant as but, anything, right, isn't his, it? His it's ageless and timeless. And, it, and he has a legacy. A lot of times street performing and certainly juggling, it's very ephemeral. It's gone. Once it's gone, it's, it's gone. But he, he is a person that people still remember and talk about. And, and it was sad for a few years because people would come up and they'd say, where's the guy with the puppets? And we'd have to say, oh, you know, you don't want to tell them. Yeah. You don't want to say, you'd, you'd rather say he's in Florida or he's, you know, he, he went to Hollywood. Or, but, yeah. but we had to yeah. say, yes, he had a wife and kids and, and he tragically died. Yeah. And we, had, yeah. we did a lot of fundraising and whatnot. Yeah, it sounds to me like you were very close to him. I was. I had a lot of respect for him as an artist because he, he obviously was very, very good at what he did. And I think that's the goal is to, um, oh. to try to be good at at what you're trying to do. Oh, so we are, uh, we are at the end of our uh, show, and I want to thank you very much. This is Somerville Producers Group. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, dear. Thank you. You're wonderful. Oh, thank you.